Welcome back, Awakening Beauties. My name is Robin. If this is your first time joining me, I give you a hearty welcome. Last year, I did a no buy year, and now we are officially in January of 2024. My no buy year has ended, and boy, has it ended. Yes, I've been making a few purchases, and, and I did want to talk to you guys about what are my goals now for 2024 after going through a whole year where I didn't buy clothes, shoes, accessories, houseware, skincare, or makeup. But now we're past that, right? And I'm not gonna do another no buy year. I, I actually thought about it because I said, I could probably do another no buy year, but I wanted to buy a few things and you know, life is delicious and I wanna enjoy life. I wanna have new things from time to time. So I thought, well, maybe I could do another no buy year if I gave my permission to just sort of buy the things that I wanted in January and that would carry me through to the rest of the year. But I decided not to do that. I decided that this is going to be a low buy year for me. And I just want to talk about what that means for me. You know, there's going to be more videos upcoming. I my printer just has a mind of its own. It decides to make noises at the most random times. But yes, this is going to be it to, I just totally lost my focus. Printer I should just turn you off. Okay, so this video is going to be about goals for my low buy year. I'm also going to be making videos, you know, talking more about doing a no buy year, what I learned from it, would I do it again? And, you know, there's a lot of other realm of things to talk about when it comes to the no buy year, because that's a pretty big deal. That was a big deal for me. A person who just kind of buys the things that I want whenever I want them. You know, it's so easy just to push of a button. And in fact, some of the purchases I've already made since January 1st have been at the push of a button. And it, I'm actually feeling a little nervous about that. And today I spent quite a bit of time working on my budget and looking at what I've already spent in this first week of 2024 and saying, okay, you went through a whole year without spending money. It's understandable that there's things that you've been wanting, that you've been putting off, and now you're going to get them. So, you know, I give myself the grace of knowing that you know, this is not going to be how my entire year is gonna be. And I have actually set myself a budget. So let's just sort of talk about that. First thing, that is really important to me is to stay mindful of my purchases. And for everything that I'm going to buy, and maybe I didn't do this for the first few things that I bought this year, I'm not sure. I mean, some of the things I knew that, hey, I don't, these are gonna be things I'm definitely gonna buy, I've been wanting them, I've been thinking about them all year long, or at least for several months now. Uh, most, some of those things that I bought have actually been on my list since the very beginning of the year, so uh, of last year. Anyways, wanting to stay mindful of my purchases and continue to ask myself if it's something that I really need or if it's something that I want. And it's okay if it's something that I want because I do have now a beauty budget for myself. If it's not in that category where I have a budgeted amount, is it something that I really need? Is it a replacement item? Have so, if something broke, like last year, in my Chemex, where I make my coffee, my pour over coffee in, I broke it. I broke it, I think in November. And it's something I use every day and my parameters for my no buy year is if something broke, lost, stolen, would I be actively seeking to replace it? And that was a heck yeah. So I placed the order on Amazon and had it by that night <laughs> delivered right to my door. But also, is it something that I already have? I was looking at new water bottles. I'm, you know, with 2024, every time it's a new year rolling over, Many of us take the time to assess what are our goals for the year as far as our health and fitness and in our life and we wanna feel good and changes we wanna make. And I need to drink more water. And that is a big goal for 2024. And I have a whole bunch of health goals. Maybe that'll be another video, but 
I uh, don't want to get too ahead of myself. But yeah, I was looking at water bottles and I was like, oh, my water bottle holds 24 ounces. And I take my water to work with me, by the way. I don't use plastic water bottles. And when I go to the gym at my office, they have a filtered water station where you can fill up your water bottle. So I, I, haven't, been go I haven't even been going through my 24 ounce bottle every day. And I was like, I need to have a 40 ounce bottle so that I can drink my water all day long. I'm like, I'm not even drinking my 24 ounce. And I have a ton of water bottles in there. I mean, some of them I need to declutter. A kitchen declutter is coming soon. <laughs> but I do have a couple other bottles that if I want to take more of my water with me to work, I can use them. I don't need to buy a new water bottle just because I think it's going to help me drink more water because the reality is I know me. Nope, it's not gonna help me drink more water. I am good with my own water bottle. And I know that's a silly thing to think about, but those water bottles are not inexpensive. If you get a nice quality water bottle, you're looking at $24 and up for a nice water bottle. So, and you know, here I am thinking, oh, it's only $24, but that $24 adds up if you start adding other things into your cart. And before you know it, you're at $150. So I took it out of my cart and I said, and, and sort of at the influence of my husband who was like, you have water bottles. And I was like, I know, but I want a new water bottle. I'm sticking with my old water bottle. But the other thing that I'm thinking about when it comes to being mindful is, can I wait to buy this thing for a week? Or could I wait a month, three months, six months, a year, maybe. I have things in my save for later in my Amazon cart that I don't know if I will ever buy because it was an impulse. I put it in my cart. I saw a video. A YouTuber was talking so highly about a product, saying that this thing is gonna change your life. This is the hair product that has made my hair long and healthy. This is the spray that I use in my shower that makes me feel like I'm at a fancy spa. I know me. I'm not gonna spray that thing. I'm gonna take it in my shower. I'm gonna forget all about it. I'm gonna forget to spray that eucalyptus spray in my shower. So why do I need to buy this? I put it in my cart, sure enough. And then I saved it for later. And will I ever purchase that? Maybe. I'm thinking more of the guest bathroom when I have guests saying to them, I know this is not the most beautiful bathroom you've ever spent your weekend at, but here you go. Here's a eucalyptus spray and you can feel like you're at a spa. Maybe for that point, I will do it. But at this point, I know me, I'm not gonna use it. Now, I do have a budget. Like I said, I have a budget for products to review on this channel. And because I love beauty and skincare and I've really gotten into it over the past couple of years, sort of wasn't using that many products up until a couple of years ago. And then I turned 50 and I sort of had a little bit of a panicked feeling of, I need to start upping my game when it comes to skincare and makeup. And um, so yes, my beauty budget, and this is not for replacement items, although it could include replacement items depending on what's going on in my personal life and my finances. But basically I've set $200 aside every month for me to use to try new products, whether it's skincare, whether it's uh, makeup, and you know, $200 doesn't get you far, even at the drugstore these days. I mean, there are foundations that are like $25 at the drugstore. I'm like, wow, prices have really changed, have they not? So yes, I'm being very judicious in the things that I'm choosing. I'm trying to go into the store and actually swatch them or you know try them on and wear them so that I know, is this actually a product that I will use? And there have been some that I, I was dead set that I was going to get. And then I swatched it and tried it in the store and just was like, eh, no, I don't think so. So they went off my list. I have an ongoing list of products I want to try. And that one, the, some of those went right off my list. As you'll know, if you've watched my channel last year, although it was a no buy year for me, I was able to use, and here 
Here it goes again. I've said it for the thousandth time. I use my Athleta MasterCard for my purchases at the grocery store, if I'm traveling, just for everything. And I pay it off at the end of the month. And I accumulate points and it's great because you can use it not only at the Athleta, which I love Athleta, but you can also use it at Gap, Banana Republic, and Old Navy. And this is actually from Old Navy. I got this using my reward points last year. And I just love this little top. And so comfortable and cozy. And the price, even though I got it for free, the price was really good. That's the thing I love about Old Navy is you really can find some nice things and that are a little bit trendy, but, but also very cozy, good fabrics, um, well-made. Not everything, a few things I've had to take back, but I'm a petite, so ordering online is really the way to go because I can buy petites online and try them at home. So my budget for clothes this year, I am putting a $100 budget a month, $100 per month. And uh, since I do use points, I've already got about $50 in, in reward points, probably gonna have another 250, so that's $300. That's, that's free money, basically. That's, I can buy clothes and I like those retailers. Do I wanna try other brands? Of course I do. I wanna try Quince, I wanna try Lily Silk. There's a few other brands that I would really like to try because I've been hearing good things about them. It's, I'm sort of torn, to be honest with you, because I'm trying to get out of this consumerist mentality. And I still have it, even though I did a whole no buy year, I still have the want, the desire for new things. And what I'm working towards is not quite minimalism, but Definitely leaning into a more minimum lifestyle, a more minimal wardrobe. I want to pare down and have less stuff. And this is just going to take time. And I'm not ready to just get rid of everything. I think that would be traumatic for me. I've done it and I'm doing it in stages and I've done a bit of it. I've done, I did a huge shoe declutter, which shoes are a big thing for me because I'm a women's size four. So it's hard for me to find shoes. If I need to find a replacement pair of shoes, it is really tough for me to find shoes. But with the clothes, here's the thing though, with the clothes is what will this replace? I know that I'm going to be decluttering more of my shoes. I know that I'm going to be decluttering probably a lot of my clothes. I've done these closet cleanouts. I've done the 30 day wardrobe challenge uh, where I'm trying to wear different things in my wardrobe in new ways that excite me. But a lot of the clothes in my closet just don't excite me. And there's nothing wrong with them but they're just sort of like not me anymore. My tastes have changed and I'm just in a different like era of, I'm in a different Robin era. And I, I'm, I'm really, I am gonna do a closet declutter and that's gonna, that might be really hard. Although a lot of that stuff is not hanging in my closet right now. A lot of it is in bins, stored away. I took a lot of stuff out when I, transferred my spring summer wardrobe into my fall winter wardrobe and I'm not missing any of those things at all and even when I see footage of me wearing those things or photos of me wearing some of those things I don't have that feeling of oh I wish I had that right now I would love to wear it I don't have that feeling right now that I don't even care I don't even want it a closet declutter a shoe more shoes are going to be leaving the closet and I, and I do want to bring in some new shoes. I'd actually rather buy shoes at this point than clothes because <laughs> I just, that's how much I love shoes. So again, asking the question, is this a need? Is it going to replace something? What will it replace? Some people don't put anything in their closet unless they take something out. I'm not that extreme, but I do go through and declutter my closet quite frequently. Having things, and I've mentioned this before, having things in my closet that I really love, that I love to wear over and over, that are good quality, um, that hold up after washing, and that are elegant and 
and a bit timeless. I'm not against trends. I mean, I'm a fashion designer, so I have to follow the trend because you want to make things that people actually want to wear. I'm changing things up and refreshing, but I don't want to have like 10 of the same thing. And I tend to do that. If I like something, I tend to buy from different manufacturers, from different stores, the exact same thing. I don't know if you've done this before, but you like, I, I, it'll be a color. Like one year, what was it? It was like, you know, like that baby pink color that was back in the early 2000s. And I just had, everything was baby pink in my closet. I just kept buying that color over and over and over because it was what was trending. And I'm very proud that when the Barbie core trend was happening last year and when the Barbie movie came out. I mean, I want it fuchsia. I want it hot pink, you know, and I had nothing in my closet that was that color. And I was like, that's a, actually a really nice color on me. I usually get compliments when I wear that color. And, and I've always had that color in my closet in the past. And now I don't have that color. So I used my Athleta Rewards and I bought a a sweater from Gap. It was a summer weight sweater that was in that fuchsia color. And I had my Barbie pink color and I was very happy. And I wore it a lot last year and I'm going to wear it a lot this year. I have a feeling. How did I, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but the whole point of that was that you don't need multiples of the same thing. You can have one or two of this, the same type of thing, but I mean, you really don't need more than that. Oh, hey, nice to see you. I'm glad you're still with me. Listen, I don't wanna waste your time, but I would really appreciate it if you would just check to see if you're subscribed. Like 80% of you aren't subscribed and you're watching my videos, you little silent stalkers. I really appreciate it. I notice every subscriber that joins and every time a subscriber joins, an angel gets its wings or something like that. I also appreciate if you like this content, give it a like. You can always unlike it later on if you decided, I just didn't like that video. That Robin girl, I don't think I'll ever watch any of her videos. But I hope you don't think that, and I don't think you will. You can also hit that notification bell. That way you know when I upload, right when it happens. I only upload about once a week, on Sundays usually, sometimes twice a week on a Wednesday. That's extra content for your viewing pleasure. Anyways, thanks so much for your attention. Now, back to the video. So in the third area, okay, we covered, we covered makeup, skincare, we covered clothing. But this next area, I sort of touched on it before, but this is an area that can get me in a lot of trouble. And that's organizational products. I love acrylic bins and baskets and things that help me organize. I love to organize. I, I should probably be an, a professional organizer because I just love organizing. You wouldn't really know that from looking at my office and the condition of my office right now. But I actually do love to organize. I guess maybe I don't love to organize this because this reminds me of work. Work I don't want to have to do. But organizing my closet, organizing my bathroom, doing little drawer organizers. Oh my God, I get hot just thinking about it. But again, I have to ask, do I already have things that I can use? I don't need necessarily to go out and buy other products when I have acrylic bins that maybe I'm not using. And I just have to put everything together, see what I have and see what my needs are. And, and, and that's something you can do too. You might have, if you can't afford to have your home look like the home edit, okay? You might have things that you can use. Even like, these were on the, the dresser that used to be behind me. I've sort of changed my office around, but even if you have these kinds of boxes and you're like, ah, yeah, but I don't know what's inside them. I like the acrylic. Well, what's to say that you can't label them? You could always label your boxes so that you know what's in it. And if you decide to change it to hold other things in it in the future, you can stick a new label on it. Things don't have to be perfect. You can get creative with the things that you already have. Like I love using mason jars for organizing things. I, I mean, I've used mason jars for organizing pens. Instead of buying all of those like plastic or acrylic bins to put your sugar and this and that in, you know, in your flour and whatever, I've actually used mason jars before because I couldn't go out and buy those things. So you just get creative. Start, you know, going on Pinterest or YouTube and seeing 
DIY things, things that you can do yourself that you don't have to go spend money on organizational products. So that's something that I want to be mindful of. Will I buy some organizational products? Probably. And FYI, I already have. <laughs> it's a baby to move. I got those those water bottle organizers so that my water bottles won't be falling over in my cabinet anymore. But I don't want to buy any more for now. So that's that's something I'm keeping mindful of, like just because I want my home to look like the perfect picture, perfect home. And like I said, the home edit, which I love. I love that show. I love those girls and uh, they can do no wrong in my eye, but, <laughs> but my house can't look like that. And I don't have the finances for that. And even if I did, do I really want to keep buying more and more and more and more and piling up and piling up and piling up? And yes, you're buying these things to help you organize, but maybe you have too much stuff to organize. Maybe you need to get rid of stuff. That's something that I'm thinking about a lot lately. All these organizational products I want to do, but maybe I just need to get rid of stuff. Okay. Next category, budget for things to make me healthy. I was talking about that water bottle and I, and I seriously thought about buying a new water bottle. But again, is this something I need or something I want? Now, as far as like vitamins, last year I did not include that in my no buy year. But I actually did cut down on my vitamins and I switched to AG1. None of this video is sponsored. Nobody is sponsoring me. Nobody cares about my little channel right now. <laughs> so I'm not sponsored by anybody. But I, I did switch over to AG1 and stop taking some other vitamins that I was taking. And it ended up being slightly less every month for me to use AG1. But there are vitamins that I kind of would like to look into trying. I'm, I'm interested in Nutrafol for hair growth. And I've talked about and never got around to really making a video. I, I, maybe I did talk about that I have a the, the laser helmet, the eye restore laser helmet. I, I've, I had already had that before I started my no buy year. But I really do think that the AG1 actually is helping my hair to grow. My hair is not been this long in a in a very long time. So I'm going to continue with the AG1. I'm going to continue with the vitamins. I have some other vitamins that I haven't even opened. Like I need to start trying them. And I did buy myself this a new you know, a new pill dispenser. Uh, and it's super cute. I'll pop in a picture here. Um, I, I had it, one that was daily. It was, tw you know, had the AM and PM and I lost one of the days. I don't know what happened. Last year I lost one of the days and I just can't bring myself to use it now that I lost one of the days. And it was sort of bulky and the one that I got is uh, much slimmer. So tonight I'm gonna divide out all my vitamins and tomorrow I'm starting taking some, some vitamins that I already had that, that I need to use up and on top of my AG1. And yeah, I'll reassess in a few, I have like three months worth of vitamins at least. And so I'll reassess after that three months is up. Also, I'm not doing a gym membership in 2024. Um, last year, at the beginning of the year, I still had a gym membership and I ended up canceling because a gym opened up at the office building where I work. So I go to that my office gym. And so yeah, I'm not going to, to get another gym membership this year. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And I did pay for a trainer for part of last year and it's not in my budget for this year. I will reassess in a few months. I, I would like to meet with a trainer once a month just to sort of mix things up. And uh, I think it is helpful and it, it, it is helpful. It is helpful to me. So um, I don't know if it will be the same trainer or not. I, I, you know, have to kind of see if I can work it into the budget. But for right now, no trainer is on the books for being a part of my budget. Another thing I'm not spending money on is weight loss programs. I've been down that road, you know, spending for certain diets and weight loss programs. And I'm sort of tired of the yo-yo dieting and that has happened my whole life. And I'm just trying to be healthy at this point in my life and making better decisions. So that is not going to be part of my low buy year. 
or probably any year in the future. Just not gonna do it anymore. I'm also not gonna spend any money on any fitness equipment. I've been down that road before. I have fitness equipment. I have fitness equipment that I can use and I intend to start using it this year. You know, there's fitness equipment at the gym at my work and I have fit I have some here. I have things here that I can use. So I'm not spending any money on that. Now, when it comes to self-care, last year I only got one massage and I got no manicures and no pedicures. And I don't wear nail polish, I play guitar. So on this hand, I have to keep my nails really short and I keep them a little longer on this hand for plucking and strumming. But I, I did find out, I got a flyer from my neighbor right over here that she does mani petties inside her home now. She started a little business. I, I need to I need to get with her because I'd like to start getting at least you know one pedicure a month. And I don't use I don't do nail polish by the way. That's another thing I don't do is nail polish because it just wrecks my nails. And anytime I put nail polish on there, it just wrecks my nail. If I take the polish off, it's just little white spots all over my nail. And even if I use cuticle oil and try to keep things moisturized, because I've had estheticians tell me that it's a, it's a dry it's a dry nail. That's what's happening. But either way, it looks funky. I don't do nail color. And I just like a natural, nice buffed look. So that's something I do want to start adding in. And maybe that will have to be part of my beauty budget. You know, just that kind of self-care will have to come out of my beauty budget. And um, I'm thinking at this point, that's where it's going to have to come from because I'm not going to pull it from other areas that I have designated. I'm saving up for some things. I'm trying to pay some things off and I'll have to decide, do I want? things from Sephora or do I want to get my nails done? I haven't decided yet. Last area for me, uh, which last year I did set a, a cap for myself. I think I set a cap of um, $100 a month. I will be doing all of my book work in the next few weeks. So there will be a video hopefully that will go up by the end of this month, which will talk about what I actually spent in my no buy year. I've done first, second, and third quarter. Uh, I will link those videos below if you're interested. And um, I was saving money in areas and then there were some other areas that I was kind of surprised I didn't save as much money. But overall, I did see um, a greater increase in my savings last year. So keeping the education budget at $100 a month. And when I say education, I do I do improv classes, I do workshops. Sometimes I do an online thing, you know, that's something spiritual, something to help you out. Um, but, but really I'm trying to keep that budget at $100 a month. And you know, so some months you don't spend anything and then other months you spend like $300. I'm making the average be around $100 a month. And I think I would be good if I, if I can stick to that as my budget for education. So that's my goals for my low buy year. And if I can stick to this budget, then one of my big goals is to get my mortgage paid off in three and a half years and to get my home equity line of credit which is like twice as much. We owe twice as much on that. And the interest rate is twice as much as our, as our mortgage. So I'm trying to get both of those paid off in three and a half years. And that will mean that when I'm 55, I will be debt free. Hard to imagine being debt free, but I, I really want it. I really want it. And I know we have major repairs and like we need a new roof on our house and that ain't cheap. I don't know where that money's gonna come from. I don't wanna have to take out a loan to do it. So, um, you know, I'm trying to put as much money into savings and my husband and I, we wanna travel. We, we got to travel last year and mainly because of my no buy year. We got to take a couple of trips. And so we wanna take a nice trip this year. It's been a long time since we've taken a, a, a big trip together and we wanna go see Alaska. That's kind of, it's on our bucket list of places that we want to go. And that's one of the, one of the things that we want to do this year. So now, you know, some of the goals that we have this year is, well, we won't get all of our debt paid off this year, but if I can really focus and I'm also maxing out my IRAs and 
my 401k. <laughs> I'm trying to just save as much as I can, pay off as much as I can, but have some want of quality of life. And for me, quality of life means being able to buy some things that I want, but being mindful and not being compulsive about my spending. So anyways, I thank you so much for joining me. If you're doing a no buy year or a low buy year, let me know. I would love to support you any way that I can, even if it's just encouragement through this channel. And I didn't even mention, and you may have noticed, and I'm not sure what order my videos are gonna be going up, but things are a little bit different in here. Yes, this was part of our business budget that we did some, buy some new lights and a little backdrop here for photographing our products that go up on our store. My husband and I have a separate business called Charm City Paintball. So anyway, some of this was a business expense, but uh, I'm taking good advantage of it. Well, that about does it for me. Thanks so much for joining me. And until next time, just be kind to yourself. You know why? Because you're doing great.